Hey, what's up guys? I'm Frank Torn and welcome back to Victoria 3 as we are playing as the United States. So the last episode I did forget to show you guys the other campaign I did as the US at the end of that video. So we'll do it at the end of this one. Hopefully I remember this time. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. Let's let it play. Uh, though we do need to take care of one thing. I forgot I wanted to do this. And France has broken off their trade agreement with us. That's probably due to the, the lower relations with them. I'm not entirely sure why they broke that off. Sometimes AI just does strange things because it looks like the relations really aren't all that bad with them. Yeah, well they are cautious now. That's probably due to all that infamy we just got when we took that decision last episode. So that makes sense. Infamy has its issues and uh, you know penalties and stuff, but we're going to be burning that down quicker because of all that influence we currently have. So we're uh, you know, taking it down 25% faster. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at our chemical plants because we actually have a shortage of explosives. So I think we're going to go ahead and switch over to the LeBlanc process for both of these because we already have this one on it. Uh, we'll do that in Indiana as well. That does mean less fertilizer, but fertilizer is pretty cheap and that's going to drastically decrease the explosive price. In fact, I wonder if it's only so high because of the war that we just ended. Maybe we should wait. Let's give it a little bit of time and see if it ticks down. It doesn't look like it. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of buy orders versus sell orders right now. Yeah, there's probably not much, uh, yeah, just the munition plants, but that is an expensive good, a uh, military good that we have to pay for. It didn't say that in here, uh, but yeah, it is a little bit of a problem. South Dakota has some, some problems with access do the, the low infrastructure here. Okay, so that is an issue, and that's because they have all these gold fields, and the gold fields do earn us quite a bit of money. Uh, we can't increase them any further. Uh, there's there's also gold mines. The gold fields are like the, the automatic ones that just uh, form on their own. There's also gold mines, though. Again, I don't think we have any of those. We could take a look real quick if, if some have popped up. No, there's, there's no gold mines just yet. Uh, once we get those, we will want to, to build them because that can produce a stupid amount of money. Um, so, yeah, I really don't think it's going to be necessary. The explosives isn't that big of an issue. Uh, so we're just going to wait till there's a, a bit more of a demand for it. Working on paper right now. Uh, looks like the groceries are still kind of expensive. So that's something that maybe needs to be dealt with still. Okay, so I suppose we'll work on that then. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do the... The groceries again. I know we built several of these food industries already. But yeah, let's build another one. Uh, we'll see if any of these would be good locations. It looks like we could do it here in Illinois again. Yeah, we'll do it right there. Again, you don't have to let that profitability completely dictate what you do. Uh, we're back in the positive money, or at least temporarily we're. Uh, we got the central archives. All right, excellent. So we completed that by getting these uh, government buildings finished constructing. Uh, so let's see what we're gonna get from it. The use of filing cabinets in the government administration has drastically increased the effectiveness of state bureaucracy. So we can say, I love it. We'll get a 5% bonus for five years, or we can say store information about our citizens, and then we'll get progress on the identification documents technology. Let's just get the bureaucracy, guys. Uh, we're adding all the states, and uh, we're also, currently working on institutions. This will be done in 39 weeks. So we, we need to continue uh, ticking these up. For right now, we're just keeping it in there. And uh, just keep it high. Giving that a, a state construction efficiency bonus, which is always helpful to have. But yeah, the economy's in a better position than it was now that we're no longer working on government buildings. Uh, getting that paper, uh, the paper mill will help as well. They'll tick down the cost of paper. And you see explosives have already de decreased in prices. And uh, Winfield Scott has retired. So now we'll have a new commander, uh, a new leader of the armed forces, I should say. So let's just take a look and see who that is. It is Frederick Harrison. Okay, so he's direct. And so they're going to have less political strength, but more attraction, pop attraction. Okay. No real other effects there. Uh, we got another event, Faith and Reason. 
So disagreements between the evangelicals and the intelligentsia are causing conflicts in government. Remember, they're both in government right now because they were in the same party, the Whigs. So we can say superstition nonsense belongs in the past. That'll piss off the evangelicals. It'll decrease their opinion anyway. Where we go with uh, the intelligentsia decreasing their opinion. My eschewing tradition is the height of arrogance. Or we say science determines fact, uh, fact, faith determines morality. This will reduce our authority by 25% for five years. Hmm. I think we have a lot of loyalty from both of them, yeah, it looks like. So let's say superstitious nonsense belongs in the past. Doesn't really matter which one we piss off or irritate because they're incredibly loyal. They like us quite a bit. All right, so this will allow us to get, uh, which remember, we did not research this. We got this from technology spread, and this will allow us to get one more health system institution investment. Okay, um, so you can see that we're not uh, currently building up to our capacity, but I don't think we're going to. This is why I talked about why we might not want to build a bunch of uh, you know, construction sectors. It says at some point, I'm gonna wanna stop building because I don't actually like going to debt if I can avoid it. I guess my old style paradox player. Uh, debts in this game is not necessarily a bad thing. So we can go in debt, it'd be perfectly fine. Um, we don't want to not build anything because then we're not using the investment pool. And so I think what we're going to do is either get more revenue or only build one thing at a time, uh, which, you know, with both of those are, are potential options. We'll, we'll take a look and see if we can get some more revenue without pissing anybody off too much. Uh, we also got a new production method. Steel, I think, is pretty good in value right now, so we probably don't want to mess with the price at all. Yeah, it's actually undervalued a little bit, so we don't need to produce more steel, but eventually we'll have steel problems, and uh, we'll deal with that then. For right now, we're, we're going to focus on ending slavery. That's, that's the focus at the moment, and uh, let's take a look at our economy, see if there's anything we do here. So we already are on low taxes. You'll see the effects here rather than like pissing off pops you know rather than pissing them off just automatically because you have high taxes or just automatically making them happy because you have low taxes instead it affects how many radicals you get from the standard of living decreases so effectively because the the pops are, are losing their standard of living their standard of living is is decreasing and they're blaming the government and the government's taxes for that happening and so you're getting more radicals because you have higher taxes. Or their standard of living is, is decreasing, but you have lower taxes, so they're not blaming the government as much because, you know, it's not obviously not a problem with taxes. Uh, so it's it's not really uh, like many other games where it's just like a flat, like a, a opinion penalty or something like that, or opinion bonus. Uh, also, you get legitimacy bonuses as well. Uh, so because we want to try and keep the radicals as low as possible, particularly with what we're currently working on, we will not just straight up increase taxes to medium taxes. Um, similarly, I don't think we're going to decrease government wages or military wages. I think our best option is probably consumption taxes. Uh, we do have a little bit of authority we can play around with. Uh, we're currently using 200 to suppress the southern planters. Probably don't want to spend, because remember we want to keep a little bit of bonus to try and get this done quicker. So probably don't want to spend all of the 200 authority that we currently have, maybe a hundred, and I'm thinking like a sin tax on tobacco. I personally don't like sin taxes because it feels like the government's telling me what I'm allowed to do and not allowed to do what's morally acceptable. Uh, but in the game, I think that might be the best way to go. We can also do luxury furniture. We'll get a, le a little bit less money, but it'll only hit our richer pops while tobacco is going to hit everybody, uh, which we can take a look at that real quick. I haven't even shown that at all. Uh, so let's just pop into the, the pops here. This is our population screen. Number of pops, how many are politically involved, how many are politically inactive. Uh, the overall standard of living is 13.8, so impoverished. But you can look at it for each class. Uh, the upper strata, for instance, is affluent. They're doing well. Uh, secure for the middle strata, they're doing well as well. You know, it's just the lower strata that aren't doing great. Uh, you can see the cultural breakdowns, uh, which if you prefer pie charts, you can switch to that, or you can stay in what they call the grid 
I think. Yeah, it's the grid. So you can stay with this as well. That's an option. Uh, so if you just looked at like our population, you know, 56.6% are Yankee, 23.2% are Dixie, Afro-American are 14.3%. You can see the political strength break down as well. And then you can see our religion. 93.1% of our country are Protestant. And then of course you got the professions. 40% are peasants, quite a bit. Quite a bit of our population are currently peasants. Uh, we can click on this and see every single pop in our country. So let's say we wanted to, let's look at somebody poor. Let's look at the laborers. Um, there's only two of those Jewish Yankee laborers in Minnesota right now. Let's look at one that has a, a bit more numbers. How about these Catholics here that work in the glass works? So we're gonna take a look at them. You see a lot of different stats about them. All pretty useful, like what's going on with their population, why it's increasing, so on, so on. They're having 319 yearly births, 266 yearly deaths, and so that's why the population is currently increasing. Uh, this is their current workforce, those are dependents, the ones who don't work regular jobs but can still earn some money. There's dependent wages, so they earn a little bit, and you'll see that here. Uh, so basically, as far as the wages from the workforce for this pop is 362 while dependent wages are only 67.2. So it's very helpful for, for those pops. That's the money that they're earning under the counter or earning out of the household, you know, women perhaps, uh, maybe spinning cloth or whatever uh, from home, uh, or you know maybe a, a senior citizens doing something from home or whatever, you know, whoever's considered a dependent, which you know, dependents can be anything. They can be children. You can see other things in here as well, like the literacy rate, pretty low for these laborers, 1.7%. They are accepted in our country. Their culture is accepted because they're Yankee. That's one of our primary cultures. And their intergroup that they support is the rural folk. Uh, but what we came in here to look at, this is the net income. So basically the, the income minus the expenses. So from their expenses, you can see their per capita taxes here. That's what they're currently paying. You know, a little tiny chunk of the money. Not too bad, uh, but quite a bit more going into income taxes here, 45.3. Uh, but still, the majority of their money is going towards their needs. And you can hover over each one of these to see exactly, like, you know, how this is costing us and, and what they're getting uh, in there. So the reason why I popped in here is to look at the intoxicants. And so you can see that these are all uh, substitutable. Uh, so they don't have to get, you know, one specific good to fulfill that intoxicant need. Uh, they can get liquor, tobacco, or opium. Uh, tobacco and opium fills it a little bit better than liquor does, at least per unit value. And so we can hover over this to see exactly what they're buying here. They're not buying any opium because we don't have opium in our market right now. And instead they're getting tobacco. Uh, so they're doing 50.5% here of the amount that they're getting is tobacco and 60.8% of the cost. So you can just really dig into these details if you want to. They can be really helpful finding out why a particular group of people are doing bad, uh, why a business is doing bad, uh, why a good is really expensive. So you can dig into these things if you so desire. You don't have to, but it does make you better at the game. It makes you better understand the situation in your country. So I didn't want to show it because we hadn't looked at it yet. Uh, but yeah, that's the uh, current price that they're, they're uh, paying for their, their liquor and their tobacco. So that's going to increase uh, the price of tobacco uh, if we put the syntax on it, which is what we're going to do. So we'll have a little bit of money to play around with because, frankly, America doesn't earn a lot of money because of their tax system. Our tax system is one that doesn't earn much. It, it might be something we want to change in the future. Uh, but this right here won't hit them as hard as if we were to go to medium taxes. That's going to hit them much harder and also is going to result in us having other penalties. Uh, we no longer get that negative 10% radicals from standard living. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll instead increase the, the price of tobacco. And we could always, if we wanted to help kind of phase that a little bit so they're not hurt as badly from it, uh, we could just go ahead and produce more tobacco fields so it's not as expensive. I'm looking for the tobacco here, uh, but I'm not seeing it. We could just sort it by good so we could find it uh, a little bit quicker so it's in alphabetical order. So we can see exactly what the cost is. It's actually a little under right now. So I don't think it's much of a problem. They're paying a, a lower value than they would. So we don't have to do anything with that. Uh, but now we have a little bit more money to play around with. 
How right, we're gonna build up our gold reserves before we uh, do anything with that. Uh, because we got the logistics, again, from the technology spread, uh, we now have 20% more conscriptable battalions, so more armies available to us. We do want to increase the size of our army. Um, do we want to do that now, though? Let's build up the gold reserves before we do anything. So we got an event, Discord, within the Industrialists. An influential faction within the Industrialists has grown frustrated with their co-members' neutrality on the top of, of Slavery Band. Uh, we saw that, that the Industrialists didn't have an opinion. Uh, they were neutral when it came to us banning slavery. They didn't support it or oppose it. Uh, themselves in favor of the law, they have now resolved to form a separate political faction intent on passing it. Okay, so this could help us. Uh, so basically, we, we got through the the uh, full circle there. And that's uh, this is the event from that. So we can say, with their support, the bill shall pass. So this will increase enactment success by 15%. Pretty useful. But the industrialists are going to have less pop attraction. Okay, so that's not a good thing. Uh, but we could instead say the rural folk extend an open hand to these to these mavericks. We're only going to get a 10% enactment success chance rather than the 15%, and it's going to hurt the industrious even more while helping the rural folk. Uh, let, let's go with this one, guys. And so now we're at 46.8%. Still trying to get it passed. And uh, the next military attack that's spreading to us is shell guns. Southern planters are no longer powerful, they're just influential. We got another native uprising. Looks like perhaps a couple native uprisings. One of these is involving Mexico. Okay, so the, the Comanche have risen up against Mexico. I see. So we could get involved in that and help them out. I don't think we're going to. We're probably going to go ahead and declare our neutrality eventually, but we'll wait. We'll keep it open for now, uh, but we will have to fight this one here. To annex, I guess, all this territory. I think we'll be able to annex all of it, which is nice because Metsuko would have colonized some of that if it hadn't happened this way. So we'll have to raise up our troops again. Uh, as far as like how many they have, yeah, we only need to raise up one army, and we only have one commander right now, and that's Taylor in the Midwest. Because yeah, I just haven't appointed anybody else just yet. And I guess we can go ahead and. Declare our neutrality on this one now, because uh, it doesn't look like anybody else has gotten involved. No. Yeah, we could say we were supporting a side or whatever. We're not going to. We're just going to declare our neutrality. Let Mets go conquer that, and then we'll take it from them uh, when we go to war with them. All right. So again, we have our own. So wait, this gets a little bit higher, and let's go ahead and set our troops up, just so we don't have to pay for them. Now, if we had mobilized earlier, then it does increase the chance that they'll just give in. But that doesn't happen often. Not as often as you'd expect, considering the fact that they have a very high chance of failing uh, in this war. Yeah, it, it just doesn't happen very often. Despite the fact that they have like no chance of winning. Uh, yeah, they just rarely ever do. Um, so the game crashed. So because of the crash, we lost 17 days. Uh, but I don't think much happened during that 17 days. Let's just try and raise up our troops now, see if it's going to cause another crash. Well, it looks like it's fine. I've had a, a few crashes, guys, uh, in, in Victoria. Not many, but it does it does happen uh, more than other Paradox games. But it's, it's not too much of a problem. But obviously you don't want any crashes. Uh, so we're looking at another election popping up here. Uh, we can go and take a look, see how the, mom the momentum looks. Uh, Democratic Party has 30%, Whig Party 45%. And as of right now, they are set to win a majority of the votes, unfortunately. Uh, and they have a bunch of interest groups attached to them now. The Democratic Party has gotten quite a bit of support. Bourgeoisie, the uh, armed forces, the rural folk. Yeah, that's, that's a bummer. They have a lot of support right now, guys. So that's going to cause us some problems. Though I, I don't know how they'll feel about slavery. And we have not yet declared neutrality in their conflict. Uh, conflict. We've got to do that again. Alright, so ours is about to break out here soon. And our home affairs investment has increased up to level 2. 
So we'll go ahead and start working on the, the next one. Uh, this conflict is broken out. Uh, we you know, have enough troops to get that done. Even with just those three battalions, not a problem. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the institutions again. I'm thinking we should continue boosting home affairs. You know, I suppose we could do two at a time. I don't know why I'm doing this one at a time. It makes sense to, to do them both. Uh, so yeah, we'll do both of them uh, because we, we clearly have the bureaucracy, the bureaucracy to support that. Uh, so yeah, we'll do both of those. All right, so this conflict here ongoing, you know, if we wanted to look at the battles. Oh, looks like we're gonna have another uprising over here. Okay, well, we already got troops raised up. They have no battalions, so we're not gonna get any additional troops. Uh, we finished up the colonization of Nebraska and Kansas. Again, I think that's because of the this firing though, so we haven't actually finished it. And he should have moved over there already. Yeah, okay, so he's already over there. We finished up the conquest here, uh, so now we're just waiting. Let me just make sure that there's not a little spot over here real quick. Okay, yeah, we're good to go. So we're knocking out these conflicts, and it does allow us to annex the Native American tribes quicker than if we were to uh, do it through the normal colonization. Uh, we're not currently building anything. My bad, guys. I mean, it did let us uh, build up our gold reserves a little bit, but... We've got the, the investment pool, so let's go ahead and make use of it. God, I'm, I'm really surprised the groceries have remained expensive. That's interesting. Okay, uh, we'll keep on building up uh, those food stores then. Luxury furniture has gotten expensive as well. I think we were trading for that from France, if I'm not mistaken. But, yeah, we're getting a lot from trade routes here. But we could try and get it through our own production so we don't rely on trade as much. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, so let's go ahead and get these things constructing. So we need another food industry. Let me see if we got anything here that might be profitable. Eh, we could continue doing Illinois, I suppose. Let me just see what other options we got available over here uh, where they actually have some population that needs a job. I mean, Minnesota. Could do Minnesota. We're going to continue to build in Illinois as well. I mean, that's not that bad. We'll do it there. And uh, what was the other thing we needed? Let's just take a look here. Oh, yes. The luxury furniture. We wanted to take a look at that situation. So let's do it through here first and just see how our furniture manufacturers are broken down as far as who's producing the luxury furniture. So we know New York is. Pennsylvania and Maine are as well. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Let's switch these over. It'll be less profitable because they have one and they have two. Oh, also, it looks like we have the precision tools as well, so we could do it that way too. Okay, this is what we'll do. We want New York really profitable. So let's go that way and then We'll go to the precision tools just here. We don't want to go for that for all of them because the tools might get really expensive. So that should hopefully fix the issue. It looked like it did based on the, the profit projections. So yeah, that has brought down the price of furniture quite a bit, luxury furniture. Uh, but regular furniture is now more expensive. So we might have to uh, go ahead and build something there. Uh, so the crystal glass has been unlocked. I don't know what the glass and lead prices are, but it looks gla like glass is pretty high and perhaps lead is pretty low. Yeah, so it works out fantastically if we just switch over to that production method. Do you want to do that in all of them though? I guess that's the question. Uh, switch them all over to crystal glass. Sure. Uh, well, glass is going to become... Very, very cheap if we do that. Also, wood will become really cheap, and lead is going to become stupidly expensive, so maybe not the best thing to do is switching them all over at the same time. Let's just do a few of these, even if it would be profitable uh, for the companies here. I think it would be better to just do a few. So we'll help Rhode Island out, because we haven't built there much. Uh, maybe Pennsylvania as well. And Maryland? And then we'll take a look at the situation with just those changes. 
and whether or not we want to change them any further. Uh, so lead is getting more expensive, so we're gonna need to fix that. Uh, and then paper. Paper's always a problem, because we use so much of it. Some more paper mills. Uh, we could do Wisconsin again, I suppose. Well, that's right, that glass tech was one that we were researching ourselves. So uh, we need to pick another tech to research. All right, uh, so currently working on that already through the, the tech spread. Could do the canneries because groceries has been a continual issue. That requires us to get more fish, but that's okay. I think we're gonna do that. Let's get the canneries. Uh, so we got two events. God's Will is the first one. This is in the District of Columbia. Charles Finney of the Evangelicals has been seen preaching in favor of the Whig Party, convinced that their victory has been foreseen in God's plans. So we say, who are we to stand against God's will? This will increase the interest group political strength of the Evangelicals and give the Whig Party some momentum. We say, such a shame the nation is not ruled by God then, and that would decrease his popularity and not grant anywhere near as much momentum. I'm not entirely sure why we'd want to do that. Well, I guess if you're just trying to decrease Charles' popularity... That makes sense. Or you say, well, God surely wants the Democratic Party to win and instead give that momentum to them. Uh, let's go with this one. We need more momentum for the Whigs. That'll change them up a little bit. They're getting more of the vote, but they're still clearly going to lose this. Uh, then we got bison hunting. The Comanche people of Comanche, Oklahoma, rely on bison for many of their basic needs. It would serve the interests of settlers in American Oklahoma if the bison population were to be depleted. Well, that's just messed up. Like, the way they would, like, shoot at them on the trains, you know, as they drove by for sport, and they just leave their corpses rotting, or to get the, the, the hides, and then kill them, and then strip the hides, and just leave the, the body sitting out there. I don't know if you've seen the pictures. It's disgusting. Uh, but, yeah, just messed up. So we can say have the army uh, slaughter bison. That'll increase the colony growth speed of Oklahoma, or our side of Oklahoma, while decreasing their building throughput. And it would also result in higher tensions. We could protect the bison herds, which would result in some farmer pops become radical, and it would decrease tensions with the Comanche, which is practically useless because they're uh, about to be conquered soon. So it's just creating radical pops for nothing. So unfortunately, we gotta go with this one. It's sad, but there's not good choices there. Uh, I guess if we were doing like a role play series, and you just wanted to do the the route, you know, go the route that makes the sense for your country rather than uh, the most efficient route. But that's not what we're doing. So, and we already have our troops over there. That's right. We're just waiting. Taylor's over there leading. So that conflict is broken out. He should get them quickly conquered. And, you know what, I did not do this yet, so they couldn't even have, oops, accepted peace. Not that they're willing to anyways, but let's go and make the proposal on both sides of these. Did I do them both? There we go. Alright, so that whenever they're ready to accept peace, that'll happen, because uh, we've already conquered them, nice and quick. All right, so they've capitulated, excellent. So that war is over. And looks like we're in the negative again here. And the election has happened. As we expected, the Democratic Party did do quite well. 57% of the votes. So legitimacy is not quite where we want it. But uh, obviously we don't want to add the whole Democratic Party in there. That would not be wise, because yeah, that would uh, would improve the the legitimacy, obviously, up to 100%, but would cause us issues with our attempts to pass that law. Now we could add the industrialists in and decrease legitimacy further, but it would open up some different uh, different things we could do. I think we're just gonna leave things as is and not uh, make any adjustments. I think things are perfectly fine, as they are. Unless the industrialists want to join our party, they do not. Okay, so we'll just leave it as is for right now. 
And uh, legitimacy isn't isn't terrible. Not great, but not terrible either. All right, so we banned slavery. So, as you can see, if you do it early on before you piss everybody off from uh, industrialization, you can get it done, and fairly quickly. We started this in 1839, so clearly it's not working the way it's supposed to. Uh, because again, when I was looking at it, I didn't even attempt to to try and do it until the 1850s in my other campaign because I expected there to be a considerable amount of opposition because based on the developer diary uh, from Paradox, that's what they said, uh, that it would be almost impossible to do early on uh, without a civil war. Not only do you, can you do it early on, but you can completely avoid the civil war if you do. So clearly this is not balanced and not working properly, uh, as many people have discussed in the comments. Again, when I did it, it was... Too late, I'd already pissed so many people off of my industrialization efforts. So now we have a new uh, political movement to restore legacy slavery. Not good support or radicalism though, so hopefully it shouldn't be an issue. We'll see. Uh, so with that done, there's no more slaves in our country. Uh, and what's great about that is it was blocking us from doing certain things as well, uh, such as changing away from uh, certain citizenship laws I think are blocked if you have the legacy slavery if I recall correctly uh, there's certain things you couldn't do so yeah we have a, a lot of different options for laws now so it's just a matter of what we want to do uh, we're not gonna be changing away from the presidential republic we'll probably stay with that for the entire campaign uh, so we don't need to dip in there uh, one unfortunate thing uh, that despite the fact that they have all these are called power structure they don't actually have power structure in the game, or what I know uh, as power structure, as somebody who has a bachelor's degree in uh, political science, uh, power structure uh, typically means, you know, unitary system, uh, federal system, uh, you know, confederation. They don't have that in the game at all, which is unfortunate because they're not properly representing federations, such as the United States. Uh, but the United States is not the only federation. Uh, looking at uh, modern countries, you got Australia, uh, Germany, so there, there's other federations. So you can't represent them, nor can you represent confederations. So with the federation, the federal system, I mean, many of you guys that live in these countries know how it works, but for those of you who maybe live in a country with a unitary system, you might not. Uh, so basically in a, a federal system, in a federation, power is split between local governments and uh, you know, the, the federal, what we would just often call the federal government, the national government. So you have, uh, here in America, you've got the national level government, you know, with the three branches, Supreme court, we got the president with the executive branch, and then you got Congress, uh, the legislative branch. And so you got that national system, but then you also have a state and you have state governments. Uh, so each state has their own governments, you know, they have, uh, their own executive, you know, through the governor. Uh, they have their own legislative branches. They have senates and, and uh, House of Representatives. Uh, and then you also have the courts as well. They have state courts. Uh, so, you know, it's a, a smaller uh, system of government. And they have a lot of independence, in a sense, from uh, the federal government. Uh, so they got a lot of power. They have their own laws. Uh, here in America, you cross state lines, and it's completely different laws uh, in, in a wide variety of, of areas. And so they don't represent that at all for federations, which is unfortunate because you're really losing a lot when you don't represent that. I mean, here in, in, in our country, here in the United States, in, in the game here, every state is exactly the same as far as laws and stuff go. And I know that's really confusing, and, and uh, maybe that's why they decided not to address it, not to touch it. Maybe something we'll see in an expansion or DLC. But for me, it is a little bit of oversight. I think it should be part of the base game. But, you know, again, it's kind of a, it'd be difficult to do. So I understand, in a sense. But yeah, bummer they don't have that. And that means they also can't represent confederations uh, either. So yeah, it's unfortunate. But yeah, they call it power structure, but that's what I think of when I think of power structure. Unitary system, federation, so on. Uh, so let's take a look at these. Uh, so racial segregation. If we want to change away from that, we got an okay chance, but we would piss off two different interest groups, including radicalize. I don't know if you go all the way down here to multiculturalism. Uh, we don't want to change that. Another options over here with our current uh, interest groups. Uh, we know we want to get rid of the local police force. We said we'd do this earlier, but we ended up getting uh, distracted with other laws. And this one is widely supported, so we get a lot of uh, 
uh, bonuses, a lot of uh, opinion bonuses with the other factions, the other interest groups. So it makes sense to go with the dedicated police force so we can decrease the power of the Southern Planters even further. Uh, so we'll probably go with that. Uh, we also want to get a health system. Our choices right now are charity or public health system. Uh, private is not an option uh, because only the industrials support that. We don't have them in the government. But trade unions and evangelicals support the public health and only industrialists oppose it. And charity is also opposed by the industrialists and is supported by the same two uh, you know, interest groups. Though you can see that which one they like is different. So could change that. Uh, could only move backwards to censorship here. And we can uh, give women the right to own property. That has a lot of opposition though. Okay, let's go for the police force. I think this is our best bet to reduce the power of the Southern Planters. Uh, so that's what we're gonna work on next. Also, it makes a lot of people happy. So we'll see uh, it impacting our other interest groups. Armed forces are no longer angry at us. Also, it looks like, oh, I didn't even know we had Vanderbilt. Cornelius Vanderbilt. Uh, so the railroad tycoon. Uh, he was apparently the leader of the industrialists. I wasn't aware of it, but uh, he died. Well, he retired. And so the game treats it always as a death. So who's the current leader? Just curious. Let's take a peek. Joshua Hunter. I'm not sure who he is, if he's a historical character or not. The name is not ringing any bells, uh, but obviously Vanderbilt. Incredibly famous. Most people know who he is. He's the Commodore. Uh, and of course the Vanderbilts are still around today. Yeah, he built that huge railroad empire, but yeah, I don't know who he is. If you guys do, I guess I could Google it after I finish recording here. Uh, but yeah, I've never heard of him. Doesn't sound familiar. Not all the characters are uh, historical. There's uh, quite a few just random characters. All right, so now we got that through. Uh, we got to finish this war here. We're just waiting for them to accept. Make sure I did that right. Yep. So I'm just waiting for them to accept, but I, I suppose Mexico will be the next target. And they have capitulated, excellent. Uh, so we're doing pretty good on money now. So we can go ahead and build a bit more. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and build, let's see what we want. Uh, we're good with the government buildings. Let me just make sure there's nothing here that we need to be aware of, like low market access. Yeah, so South Dakota is still a problem. They're uh, using too much of their infrastructure due to the gold fields. So we need to get them rails Okay, so we haven't started building railways yet, and I guess we're going to be starting with uh, South Dakota. So we're going to get our first railway going, and that's going to cost us a little bit of money here. So uh, I'm trying to build up the gold reserves a bit more, so we're going to wait to build any further. I like having a nice uh, cushion on the gold reserves for wars, expensive wars. Let me just make sure there's nowhere else to establish colonies. There actually is. We could do New Mexico there. And this is a new area too, if we wanted to start moving into that state. Honestly though, it would look really weird. It already looks pretty bad as it is. And we're already colonizing this here. Do we really want to start pushing further into that? I don't think we're going to colonize the rest of this. We're just going to do here, guys. Again, if we're going to conquer that, we should conquer it with uh, you know, an army. And invade Canada. Eh, the map's going to get too ridiculous. So this is bad enough as it is. So we won't do any further, uh, we'll just colonize there. And that's absolutely fine. Uh, Indian Territory, we do still need to annex them. Uh, so yeah, if we wanted to get them annexed, we could do that. However, this does produce infamy, and I think our infamy is incredibly high right now. Yeah. So let's, let's wait. We'll burn that down some before we uh, do that. Same with attacking Metsco, probably gonna wait a little bit. Oh yes, the Indian removal. If we don't want that to happen, we gotta make sure the Cherokee are not discriminated against so we don't have the Trail of Tears. Uh, but yeah, we, we uh, are already working on a law right now. And in fact, we just had the event pop up. All right, so I think we have to do it now. I don't think there's any way out of it. Uh, yeah, cause you're not gonna get a law passed in 90 days. So yeah, there's no way out of this, guys. So in accordance with the removal treaty, it is time for the Cherokee of Georgia to relocate to the Indian Territory. Some holdouts refuse to leave their homes and many are poorly equipped 
for the journey. So we can say coerce them by bayonet points and peasants, Cherokee Protestant peasants in Georgia will move to Oklahoma and many of them will die along the way. Offer them some assistance for their journey. This is going to be quite expensive. It's going to cost us 2650 for two years because we're paying for their removal. And then only some people, some Cherokee people, rather than many, will die. But no matter what, some of them are going to die. Uh, we're going to do this, try and uh, help them out. But uh, Trail of Tears will happen regardless. So you have that time limit. We knew the time limit. And... Uh, Again, I think you have to, to get rid of slavery first. I could be mistaken, though. I could have swore that I saw that, though, that uh, you got to ban slavery before you can change up the those laws. Uh, another uprising. That's up over here. Uh, they've already begun the conscription. They might actually have a little bit of an army. Take a look here. Yeah, three battalions. We don't need any more than what we already got, then. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Okay. So we'll just uh, try to get all those go away. So we'll just wait until this gets a little bit higher and then we'll raise up our troops. So we did get the next home affairs. Let's go with the next level uh, because again, we got plenty of bureaucracy here. So is there any more states that we can add? Let's just take a look here. Yes, there is more states. So let's go ahead and add Kansas and Nebraska for right now. I'll be a little bit conservative with it because we're currently working on two institutions. So it looks like the petite bourgeoisie are uh, happy with us. So that's actually going to increase the bureaucracy by a bit. Okay. Yeah, quite a bit. Of course, we only get that bonus while they're happy with us. And so let's go ahead and get our... Our army raised up, mobilized, and hopefully it doesn't crash this time. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and throw these guys over here. Uh, under Zachary Taylor again. And, you know, we don't have very many generals or anything at this moment. One thing to look at is our journal entries. See if there's anything I'm missing here that I haven't seen yet. And yeah, it does look like there's a couple. Uh, Oregon border dispute. Uh, so this one here, we have to map the western frontier. We also have to own all of Montana, so we don't have that yet. So we're going to have to wait till we finish that. Uh, but once we do that, then we can take a decision to map the western frontier. I find that it's best to wait until all the other ones are fulfilled before you do that. Uh, because when I was doing it before, when I didn't own uh, probably was all of Montana, it wasn't actually working. It wasn't check marking that the American Western Frontier has been mapped, even though I did the decision and completed the uh, quest successfully. And it just wanted to uh, check mark it, and it didn't work until after I had to fulfilled all the other objectives. Uh, so yeah, we will wait to do that. I'll show you guys that decision here in a minute. We also have branching out, provide rail transportation for our industries. Okay, so that's rail transportation, the uh, uh, production method, and 20% of eligible buildings. Okay. We also have to have a, a motor industry, and that's going to be necessary as we build up the rails anyways. So we'll take a look and see where uh, we are at when it comes to motors. Yeah, there we go, the engines. So I feel like you got to build the motor industry in Michigan, in Detroit. Of course. Why would you not do that for America? So that's what we're going to do. Uh, obviously, uh, it's very expensive right now. The uh, uh, the lack of, of engines is causing us some, some problems. Uh, so let's go ahead and get these buildings in Michigan. And we'll only do one for now, because uh, that might be enough. But we really should have gotten that before we started building rails. Uh, but we did not. But that's okay. Uh, so uh, we'll get that building. Uh, we need other stuff as well, though. In fact, transportation is quite expensive now uh, because we need more rails. We don't want to do that, though, until we've solved the lack of engine issue. Uh, lead. Lead is also a bit higher, so let's fix the lead problem. And paper. Well, that's all what we're going to do, guys. So let's go ahead and get... We'll get lead first and then the paper. So lead mines only in Kansas would be profitable. They don't have a lot of peasants there. Missouri's not too bad, so we'll do it there. 
And uh, then we also wanted to get the, the paper mails again. Always need more paper. Could do New York. They also have a lot of peasants at the moment. Uh, there's other options as well. Minnesota, Florida. Florida's starting to get some, some people there. Let's do New York though, guys. Because yeah, they have a lot of peasants here. So we'll build that up some. All right, excellent. Uh, they actually backed down. Okay, so we annexed all of them, even though we didn't want to. I, I guess that was something I didn't consider. So all that is now ours. All right, it's strange. It's like a tail or something, or a little, a little extra head, maybe a little arm or something sticking out from America. It's interesting, we'll fix it later. Obviously it doesn't look great on the map, but yeah, we'll get that fixed at some point. And has fared poorly in public debates. So enactment success chance has now been reduced. All right, so that's a bummer. So it looks like the Southern planters are, are winning here. Can't let that happen. All right, I was gonna build some more stuff, but it uh, looks like we're back in the negative temporarily. And we discovered gold in South Dakota. So that has resulted in a gold rush event. These always fire whenever you discover gold. Uh, so it's been discovered in South Dakota. People from all corners of the earth are converging there, confident that they will discover the, gr the next great load and become incredibly rich. So we can spread the word and South Dakota will get 125% migration attraction or say mine, it's all mine. They won't get as big of a bonus, but the gold, uh, gold fields building throughput will be higher. Let's let's do that one because we need more money. And uh, gold primarily affects your minting. You get more money from minting. Uh, we'll take a look and see if we can build gold mines there yet. No, no gold mines. So it's just the gold fields as of right now. So again, those those uh, happen on their own. But but like I said, there are gold mines that you can build too. And so as they get the wave of people there, which if we had taken that one decision, that would increase even faster. Obviously, that's not a problem for us. We haven't got anywhere near our maximum cash reserves. Now, when you hit the maximum, then that means that you're uh, throwing away some of the money that you could be saving because you got too much stockpiled, uh, essentially. So I think in my other one, I'm, I'm at the Stockpile Mother USA campaign, which we'll be looking at in this, this uh, video here. I think I've hit the stockpile. I'm not sure. I know I hit it at some point, several several times. Uh, I hit it. Looks like there's some other things here. Steam engine time. I wonder if we can do this. We got to get it up to level three, which means we have to really pump into the railways. But we'll put it up there so I don't forget about it. Why not? And uh, that other one we got to wait until Montana's done. And that's going to take uh, a couple of years to to finish that up, I think. And labor movement is the, the next thing we worked on. Also, Charles Finney died of the evangelicals. And they're no longer unhappy with us, or they were. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. It's all messed up. We got high tensions with those natives, turmoil in two of our states. Uh, engines obviously have an issue, we know about that. Uh, paper, we're already trying to solve that as well. And here we go, we can now support more declared interest. So I was actually waiting on this. Uh, so you can do it through here. We can also do it through here. So we can have up to eight, we currently have seven. We actually have everywhere that we'd want. Uh, the reason why we're over here is because of Liberia. So honestly, there's really nowhere else we want to have a declared interest. I suppose we could say France. We can only do one of them, Northern France or Southern France. I, mean, I guess we could do that. Uh, we do have all that influence we're not really using either. Uh, so like we could improve their opinion of us. Same thing with the British though, I wouldn't be surprised if they already like us quite a bit. Yeah, we could boost even further though, since it has declined a little bit. But yeah, there's really not much for us to do with influence right now, because this is, as the USA, it is a more, uh, you know, it's not really a campaign that you're gonna focus on the world early on, or at least I don't. You can play it however you want, I suppose. But I typically focus on expanding here 
on our own continent and kind of uh, ignore the rest of the world. You know, we're not going to colonize Africa. Uh, and not going to get all involved in European conflicts right now. And there's the uh, unfortunate Trail of Tears event, guys. Uh, so our efforts to remove the Cherokee from the Eastern Lands has led to the deaths of many during their overland march westward. We did what we could. Uh, their standard of living has been decreased in Oklahoma. And, uh, yeah, just devastating. Very sad uh, event in, in history, American history. So uh, we have completed that, and we didn't uh, avoid it, unfortunately. So we've gotten... That's a weird transition, of course, but we've gotten the motor industries. So we will now start to produce engines as they are able to hire people. There's not a ton of people here, so that's one, you know, unfortunate part of doing it here in Michigan. Uh, as far as peasant population is 41,000, so it's not it's not terrible. So they should be hiring, getting employment, and producing engines. Right now they're producing 12, which we don't need a lot right now. And so the engines are have already reduced in cost, meaning that we can go ahead and start uh, getting railroads. And as far as where we're going to want to do them, I think we should do them in places where the industry is lowest. So we'll kind of just dip around and see where industry is, is low. Uh, as of right now, only South Dakota, which I thought we had solved that. Oh, wow. The gold fields are costing us too much. It's not a big enough deal for me to bother building another railroad there, though, guys. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, let's actually go and start building rails from the East Coast down. So we'll start in New York since it's our most populous and most economically successful state as far as GDP goes. As you can see, it's like significantly higher than most other states with that 5.14 million. Uh, so yeah, we want to get the the transportation up because we can do a lot of things with that, guys. Uh, there's a lot of uh, production methods that need it. Uh, so let's go ahead and just build the rails here for now. Uh, do we want to build another one in Pennsylvania? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that as well. Yeah, don't have to do it this way. Could do it through these tabs here. But, you know, it's fine. We'll do it that way. So we'll slowly get the rails building out. Uh, we do have an, a, a journal entry for the Transcontinental Railroad, which will be, like, uh, built in a certain amount of uh, railways in these states here in the, the Midwest and the West. We got the canneries unlocked. All right, excellent. So that'll require more iron and a lot more fish. And, uh won't require as much grain, reducing the grain cost, which I don't think is very high right now anyways. Yeah, it's not too high. Uh, iron, unfortunately, is going to go up by a lot, though, as it's fish, so we'll have to solve those. But the groceries, that's been a continual issue for us, so... Uh, it's not quite as bad as it, it was, though, as you can see. This will probably make uh, groceries incredibly cheap, uh, which will help for the, the food need. All right, um, so we'll go ahead and switch over to that. Why not? All right, maybe not in all the places. We'll see uh, how badly that would affect things. Yeah, because groceries is going to go in the dump uh, as far as price goes. Iron and fish are going to get very expensive. So might want to wait until we actually need the the groceries. Could also do it in just like one state, like Illinois, where we just built all those. It does say we'll, they'll lose a little bit of money, but yeah, I think it's fine. I'm going to do that. Keep grain prices low. And... uh you know, if we, we find a shortage of, of groceries in the future, then we have an, an easy way to to increase that. All right, so we've got another tech researched. And so we could do the mechanized workshop. That'll increase the economy scale, building level cap. They can uh, get higher throughput. So I might want to, to do that. Could also do the chemical bleaching. That will help in the glass works. And the paper mills. That'll pr produce a lot more paper. So that could be useful. Just looking at the level twos here. Um, th this is useful for the resource discovery chance. But most importantly, it it'll let you get to the dynamite. Because this results in like a lot of people dying. The mortality goes up a lot higher if you actually use those in the mines. So something to consider. Uh, you can't just go straight to dynamite instead. Also got the water tube boilers. These are used in a variety of industries. And pretty much the, the purpose of them is 
Uh, it's one of those ones where you're uh, buying more goods so you can have lower employment, which really isn't our problem right now. Uh, now these ones though, the condensing engine pumps that are locked in the mines, that reduces more of the good uh, and, and you're also getting more employment, but it costs more tools, a few other goods. Uh, but yeah, those are, are pretty good. So maybe we want to do that one because we're going to start needing like a lot of coal, iron, and lead. And also those gold mines, once we get them, that help there as well. So I think we're going to do that. Water tube boilers, 19 months to get that knocked out. And you know, even if we get a tech and you can't use it immediately, it'll be uh, useful in the future, such as, uh, you know, those, those canneries we just got. You know, we're not going to put them all in place now. Uh, but they'll be useful in the future. All right, guys, so we're currently working on these railways, getting our rail network set up as we further industrialize, getting the steam, steam engines built out in our motor industries in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, no other decisions to take yet, but I did say that I'd look at the map the American Western Frontier. I didn't do so earlier. Uh, the reason why we can't do that is we need a certain tech, and also we need to have at least three generals or admirals. Uh, we only have one right now, so we'd have to hire two more. So no problem there. Yeah, we do need to get that tech before we're able to do that. So something to consider. Something we might want to research after the current tech that we're working on. Uh, nothing in here that's really of concern. As far as our uh, stats up here, bureaucracy is looking pretty good. Uh, authority's low. Uh, the consumption taxes and the suppressing the southern planters is where that's going. And our money is not too bad. Uh, gold reserves is back up to 2.18 million. I know the bar looks really low, but remember that's based off of the wealth of your country. Uh, you know, because it's based off of you know how much money the, the buildings have. They're the ones who provide uh, your uh, money and also the the cap for your gold reserves is based off of, off of that, their wealth, the GDP. So the, the bar is actually worth more. Uh, so 2.18 million, that probably would have been like right around here in the, the earlier part of the game, uh, just a few years ago. Uh, so we actually are doing pretty decent there. We wanna continue to build that up. You can't of course see all, all the balance here. Nice little graphs there. Other stats, uh, we got literacy. I believe that's been going up steadily. Uh, the standard of living has also been going up very, very slowly population going up, radicals is going down, and loyalists is going up. Same thing with GDP. So everything is, is improving and uh, looking good. Uh, so unfortunately, that will have to be the end of this episode as far as the, the gameplay of this campaign goes. However, we're going to go ahead and save this real quick. And then we're going to load up that other save. I'm just going to show you where I got to in the other campaign, 1886. So that's where I got to. See, I played just a couple days ago. Uh, kind of wanted to refamiliarize myself before I started the Let's Play because I hadn't played uh, Victoria 3 in like a week while I was doing that move. Then also to see if anything had changed, uh, which because I saw that there was a couple patches uh, that had happened with the pre-release version. So I want to see if anything had changed. Uh, so this is where we stand in 1886. Apparently I'm enacting workers' protections. I'm building a crap ton of stuff because uh, as you get in the later game, you just start, you know, setting it up so you got a lot of stuff building. And I just have the continental U U.S. Uh, also, that little patch there that I colonize in Alberta, just like we did in ours. Of course, we ended up getting a bit more territory with that one. Oh um, yeah, I took all the territory from Mexico, and so we have the states as we should. So we got the. Uh, modern state line here and the country's doing quite well so our gdp is at 134.1 million uh, in our current campaign i think we're at like 30 something million uh, literacy 65 percent compared to the 49 percent we currently have standard of living is 15 and, and part of the reason why that's much lower than it would typically be uh, at this point is because I, I just freed slaves like a few years ago and that's you know, they have a very low standard of living, obviously. Uh, so that could be a bit higher. My uh, population is 35 million. I think in our current one, we got 16 something million. Uh, I did have some, uh, I had some wars, quite a few wars, and some of them went like when I fought, uh, fought some great powers that got involved with some conflicts. 
and so lost some population there, but but overall not not too bad. Uh, the Radicals, 1.39 million. Lilith, 5.36 million. This is actually really good compared to what it used to be, uh, where I had insane numbers of both of those. Uh, but yeah, overall it's much more balanced out. We have you know five times the, the Lilith practically. Uh, looks like I've spent too much bureaucracy here. Authority and influence look, looking pretty good. And uh, while we're losing a lot of money, let me show you a couple things. So first of all, the investment pool is ridiculous. I have 22.9 million in the investment pool right now. The reason why we're not using it is because we're currently building government administration buildings to, to get the bureaucracy improved. I think I just got a bunch of institutions done. And, and so that's the, the reason why that's a bit low. Uh, but yeah, it's it's obviously much better than it, than it looks with this negative 28,000. We got a ton of money in the investment pool. And uh, our gold reserves are at 28.2 million, uh, you know, practically up at the top here. So not really much of a problem. We're getting a lot from, from minting from all those gold mines we got in Colorado, South Dakota, Arizona, and California, and Nevada as well. Looks like Nevada ones are pretty profitable. So lots of, of gold mines there. Also getting quite a bit of money in income taxes. I have changed up my, my laws. If you guys want to see... How that looks. Our president is Theodore Roosevelt. Okay, so he did become president. He just became president. Uh, and he's like 28 years old. Uh, leader of the intelligentsia. And we have the Free Trade Party. That's the industrialist most powerful party because we've industrialized pretty hardcore. And we have the Progressive Party, which is an alliance of the intelligentsia, trade unions, armed forces, and the bourgeoisie. Uh, the rural folk are the only ones outside of government that have any kind of power. You notice the southern planters are nowhere to be seen. <laughs> they are so weak that they're irrelevant at this point. Uh, so, looking at the laws, this is how things stand. Had some issues getting some stuff passed. You know, I was kind of learning how things work, but slowly getting it done. I went a long time without passing any laws. Like a real long time. Uh, because I had so, such problems with the radicals. I think things were a little bit unbalanced. Uh, so we had some problems there. You notice uh, I was forced to pass migration controls, but it's slowly making some movement on the uh, on the human rights. You know, working on workers' protection, uh, the children's rights. Uh, we've gotten rid of child labor, compulsory primary school. Uh, after the uh, workers' protections, I was going to go after increasing rights of women. I've done one for the welfare laws. We got the poor laws. I haven't got anything else just yet. And we'd eventually want to get rid of the migration controls as well. Yeah, slowly getting things done. But like I said, I went a long time without any uh, laws being passed. Uh, this is how we look as far as institutions go. Very strong on the, the law enforcement. Because uh, I was trying to deal with the damn radical problems that I was having. Uh, but yeah, this is the current system. We haven't spent much in, in the, uh, the health system right now. So I haven't been able to do that. Really been focusing on industrialization in this one. Pretty hardcore on the industrialization. I'll just kind of show you how we compare to the rest of the world here. So number four, uh, you know, total prestige is kind of one of the things kind of ran us down some. It's not quite as high as it could be. Because uh, the GDP is decent. Yeah, you can see we're above many of the countries. It's really just France slightly above us, Germany, Great Britain, and uh, China, Great Qing. The standard of living is pretty low compared to the the rest of the world. I mean, it's, it's I mean, I, I guess if you consider the whole world, it's above average, but not as high as it could be in many of these other, you see many of these other countries here. Uh, I have much higher. Great Britain, for instance, is significantly higher. Uh, looking at the population, really high population. Uh, just a few countries that have higher, or we got a higher population than Great Britain. Uh, one of the other things I want to show you guys when we looked at this is just how well the AI does on the map here. So you see Germany has formed, as has Italy. Uh, Austria is currently dealing with a, a revolution, so that's one thing to consider is that they're we're dealing with this rebellion here. I don't know what the revolution is about. I haven't looked at it. But uh, yeah, Austria is dealing with that civil war, so that's kind of part of the problem there. Uh, the Ottoman Empire has been slowly losing territory to the Egyptians. Other developments here. Denmark has kept this territory here from Germany. Uh, Norway is still under Sweden. Finland under Russia there. You see France has done a lot of colonization, as have the British, but really the French. 
been a lot of colonization here in Africa. Looks like there's a war over here with the Dutch East Indies and the British. So they're all starting to work on Indonesia and uh, Singapore. Yeah, Singapore's in, in British hands here. So yeah, that's the current colonization efforts. Got the Japanese Shogun here. So that's the current development. Uh, a lot of changes here uh, in South America, a lot of uh, wars and revolutions that have happened, of course, across the uh, time of the game. As you see, the, the map of South America looks a bit different uh, from where it did historically in 1886. So that's the world situation if you want to see how things develop, you know, about 50 years into the game here. Uh, Canada has fully formed. Yeah, that's where we, uh, that's where we're at. Uh, so far, my next goals was probably to attack Metsuko or something. They may make them into a, a subject or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I, I probably won't play this one anymore since I'm doing this current American campaign. I don't want to get them all mixed up with stuff. I did what I wanted to do uh, for this one, which was industrialization. Work on that a bit and uh, you know do some, some more uh, wars, kind of you know, learning ways to exploit the warfare system. And uh, of course, banning slavery was one thing I wanted to, to do. I wanted to see how that worked. Uh, with the, the American campaign. So yeah, this is the way it looked in, in my campaign. See, we're doing quite well. Uh, very wealthy. Oh, and I didn't show you guys. Uh, this is not even showing you just how wealthy we actually are. Taxation is at very low taxes. Because I, I have so much money. And so we have very low taxes. Uh, the government wages are at high, as are the military wages. So it doesn't really show the, the sheer amount of wealth we have. We have no other taxes. I don't hardly tax my people at all. A lot of our money comes from the minting, from the gold mines. And so that yeah, really doesn't even show the, the sheer wealth that the country currently has. And then of course we have like a huge amount of sort of support from all of our interest groups. So that's kind of the focus really. We're getting all of these uh, traits. We have uh, what, three that are incredibly loyal, two other ones that are just barely loyal, and then the happy we're all folk over here. They're just happy to be here. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of been the focus is dominating uh, politically and economically has been the focus of, of this campaign where in my pressure campaign I spent a lot of time doing warfare diplomacy and that kind of stuff getting involved with the uh, you know with the diplomacy the di diplomatic plays uh, doing a lot of that kind of stuff uh, and and industrial industrialization as well obviously you got to industrialize as, as Prussia former in Germany doing all that that's kind of the focus of that one um, but yeah, they're both kind of similar campaigns as they're both industrialized campaigns. I didn't do like a rural one, uh, uh, one where you kind of focus on traditional, uh, you know, traditional politics or anything. I haven't done anything like that. That's something I'll, I'll eventually want to do uh, a campaign on. Maybe we'll do that here on the channel. Uh, also haven't done a, a kind of colonization world, you know, large Navy type of campaign you might see with, uh, Britain. Maybe do that with a smaller country. If you've got more of a challenge like Portugal or something like that. You did it with France as well. Uh, but yeah, I haven't really uh, done that sort of campaign either. So I'd like to do that. And you know what? I feel like it's really fun to play as China. Uh, or, or anywhere over here in Asia. Korea, Japan. I'd like to do uh, a, a campaign with one of them as well. Something different. Uh, since my, my pressure one and, and US one were somewhat similar with the goals and stuff. That's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys did like this little look at this uh, other campaign just to show you where I got. I, I had it on fast forward. I was trying to get through the game, so probably could have made even better progress in this time period, but it was going really fast. Uh, I was just trying to make uh, make progress on the two campaigns and play as much as I possibly could in that short, limited time I had. Uh, so you could probably even make better progress than I did here, but I mean, not at this point where it's not even hard anymore because uh, I got so much damn money. I guess you could didn't you know start building up your military, which is something I didn't really work on a lot of. I've got like 40 battalions. A ton of conscripts if I need them uh, but yeah you could at this point like build up your military and start conquering people I suppose uh, but yeah I got to the point where, where I felt like this campaign yeah it was pretty much done we got a, a booming economy and no political issues at all uh, but yeah I hope you guys did look, like this extra look here at this later campaign kind of see where uh, where our goals would be to to surpass we don't want to surpass how I did in this you know obviously it's I think that's something we could do since I wasn't trying that hard in this one so I think we can easily surpass that, uh, particularly since we've already banned slavery. Uh, we've done that very early. 
Uh, so I think we can we can get past these these goals here, and uh, with that we'd be able to do a bit more war. Uh, maybe go after Canada and Mexico, try and make them into subjects or something like that in our campaign. Uh, but yeah, I uh, hope you did enjoy this. If you did, make sure you hit the like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you guys on the next one, and thanks for watching.